All right, students, grab your paper and your pencil. We're gonna draw a Japanese kimono together. Start off by drawing a horizontal line towards the top of your paper. This is going to be the top of the kimono. Next, draw two lines, vertical lines, down on the side. These are gonna be the outside parts of your sleeve. We can also then draw two lines, horizontal lines, down at the bottom of those vertical lines. This is going to be the end of our sleeves. Next, draw once again vertical lines that go up towards the top but don't touch all the way because these are going to be the inside parts of our sleeve. Nice. Now we need to think about drawing our bottom of our kimono. So go ahead, start in about the middle of the bottom of your sleeves. Again, vertical lines down, and then we're going to connect them down at the bottom. Fabulous, we now have the basic shape of our kimono. Now between our sleeves, and then in the middle of our kimono, we're gonna wanna draw the obi. The obi is the belt. You're just going to draw horizontal lines. Now you could add some little extra elements, like I'm going to do double lines. So I'll have four horizontal lines in total, but you could maybe choose that you'll wanna put a design or some sort of line pattern within yours. Let's talk about our kimonos and where the fabric overlaps. What we're gonna do is up here at the top, we're going to create a diagonal line that goes again from the top of the kimono down to the obi and about the middle of the obi. Then we're going to draw a vertical line down that lines up with where we ended with that diagonal line. Then we're going to come back up to the top and we're going to create another diagonal line that's going to cross in to the other diagonal line. Now I'm going to show you a couple extra things. Again, we can add some additional lines that run parallel with what we just made for our overlapping fabric, as you can see I'm doing here, as well as I'm going to add some horizontal lines down at the end of my sleeves just to give some additional value too. Now with the examples that we looked at for our Japanese kimonos, remember that many of the kimonos will feature some sort of geometric pattern or nature imagery. So I want you guys to think, how would you like to display your kimono? Now maybe you want a pattern that is the same all over from the top to the bottom, or perhaps you have a different pattern that's at the top than a different one down at the bottom. Again, think about how you would like to design your kimono. I'm gonna go ahead and show you here how I'm going to do mine. I'm going to start with having a pattern down at the bottom of my kimono that's actually going to repeat again on the bottom of my sleeves. Next, I'm going to add some imagery that I saw from our slides, including a little mountain, and then right above it, I'm going to add some Japanese cherry blossoms. I'm going to repeat those Japanese cherry blossoms up at the top of my sleeves. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna practice symmetry. So when I create the Japanese cherry blossom on the left sleeve, I'm going to reflect it over an invisible line onto my right sleeve so that they are facing each other. So it's the same image reflected that is symmetry. You do not have to complete yours the same way I've done mine. Remember, you are customizing your very own Japanese kimono. Once you have finished designing your Japanese kimono, it is time to go over all of your lines with a pencil. You're gonna to wanna to really go and trace over them and make dark pencil lines. The reason why is that when we transfer our design from our paper to our rubber block that we're going to be carving for this printmaking project, you really want your pencil lines to transfer onto that block. And so we wanna do nice, dark, thick lines so we can press it and it'll transfer over. It's gonna be pretty cool.
Okay, artists, so you can see I've gone over all of my lines here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rubber block. I'm going to go on the smooth side, not the texture side, the smooth side. I'm going to take my design, place it flat down. I'm going to grab a baron. Now, a baron is what we can use to press down and go all the way around our image to help transfer it from our paper to our block. Now, pulling away my paper from my block, I can see that it picked up most of my lines, but there's definitely a few didn't quite pick up. So what I could always do is just grab a pen and I could go over and just pick up those areas it didn't quite get, or I could just take the time to go over my full design once again with a pen to really accentuate my pencil lines. We really want those to stand out. That'll help me when I'm carving. So that's what I'm going to do here. Awesome. I went over all my lines with the pen. I can see them very nicely. Now it's time to go ahead and grab our carving tools. So what we're going to be using here is two different sizes of our U gouging tools. So I'm going to show you first our details with a number one size. This is a really small size that's good for details. We'll use a number three when we go into our background and that'll actually be a bigger tool that can take up bigger spaces. So with your number one, I want you to go ahead and go over all of your lines. Now here is the most important point when you are using this tool you want to make sure that your finger your pointer finger is right on the edge before you get okay down to the blade and you're gonna to want to push away from you you never want to cut towards yourself that could lead to some accidents that we definitely don't want to happen so as you're going over your lines, go nice and slow and make sure you apply pressure and guide with your pointer finger. Go over all of your details. And once all of your details are done, we'll talk about what to do next. Remember to take your time as you are going through and you're carving away at your lines. You don't want to rush too fast because then you could potentially mess up your lines, maybe carve a little bit too much out. So remember, slow and steady. Now friends, I'm going to go ahead. So work for right now on your details. It is totally okay if you need a little bit more time the next time that we come to this project. We'll also talk about our background next time and using our number three. But for now, I'll see you next time.